Are we all still here? Yes. Okay. So, do you understand what you read? If uh, you go through and read in Acts, you will find Acts 8th chapter, the 29th verse. There's a situation here. It's bar here. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, that you give me understanding and make the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. I pray, Father, that the heart, souls, and mind will receive your word that you will receive the victory and they will be able to rejoice on their knowledge being uh, widened to the point where what they say and do in, in their life will be effective each and every day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Acts 8.29 says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, i got too much stuff in my way. i got to move it. Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And that made me ask the question that how many people are reading and just simply do not understand what it is that they're reading? So here's how I want to look at this, and I ask everybody to use this method as a starting way to study. And as you have studied this scripture content, you will not get a clear picture without understanding these very important, important uh, points. Number one, read through the power, read through the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't just do it on its own, your own, because there's a lot about God's word that you can't understand unless you actually uh, have the Holy Ghost walking you through the scriptures with understanding that only the Holy Ghost can really give to you. Number two, take each noun and look it up. Look up its meaning. And what is a noun? A noun is a word that generally functions as the name of a specific object or set of objects, such as living creatures, places, actions, qualities qualities, states of existence, or ideas, or a person. Now, I mean, you need to really do that because there are differences in the words that you read in your scripture that are words that have meaning that was changed from the time that the Bible or the manuscript was actually written. And words that we use today have a different meaning than those same words did back in those days. Then also, uh, I'll show you in this scripture some other differences that uh, you may not have known unless you've studied. There are still Greek words, Hebrew word, words that are used in the translation, English translation, that if you don't look them up and understand them, you'll be confused. Third thing I have here is to understand the timeline of the scripture event. Fourth, use the method of who, what, when, where, why, and how. Hello. Okay. Hello. Somebody's Hello. sounds like it's uh, unmuted. Unless somebody had a question they're asking me. Okay. Read the whole chapter. Underline each noun you find in the scripture text you are researching. What is the subject you want to study? In a chapter, a whole chapter may mean there may be two, three, four different subject matters in the same chapter. You have to realize that chapters were not an original makeup of the Bible. The Bible was broke down into chapters. Somewhere around, I think it was 1500. And then it was broken down into verses somewhere around the 1600s. So Bible has uh, transformed in many different ways over the years from the time that it was actually written. And we know that the Bibles that we're reading are translations from the original man manuscripts that were once in Greek and Hebrew. So when you're studying, you need to understand all of these things so that you won't get 
confused. So let's get started on that. When we look at Acts 8.26, the scripture says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem and unto Gaza, which is desert. When you look at that, the point that I want to bring out is that the Spirit spoke directly to Philip. Philip, arise and go toward the south, gave him directions, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. Now, he didn't tell him, according to scripture here, or what he was going to do and what was the intent of this visit, the purpose. Okay, so when I just go back, so eight Acts eight twenty six. No one heard what I had previously on that. No. Okay, Acts eight twenty six, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So when you look at this, the thing that I want to bring attention to is what I have underlined. It says, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. This is a conversation that the Spirit, the Lord had given directly to Philip. Now, there is no other conversation that we read here other than what we saw here. So Philip didn't even know who he was going to meet on that way. So we understand that. Now, also consider Philip is not one of the disciples. There are other people named Philip. Philip was a disciple of the church. I still say deacon of the church, but not one of the apostles. Now, Acts was written around A.D. 37. This, if you understand the whole chapter, there was a huge uprising against the Christians after the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the person that, by the name of Paul, who during this time was known as Saul, was persecuting the church. So a lot of things was going on around this time. But Philip was commissioned by Christ to go down uh, and to see this person. And he says, arise, and he ro arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia. If you check your Bible out, a man of Ethiopia, Ethiopians were black. So we're taking that this man who's an Ethiopian was a black man, a eunuch, eunuch, eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. So this man of great authority, meaning this man was of, of high character, in a great position to do great things. Now, most people know uh, uh, Enoch, I keep wanting to say Enoch, Eunuch as one that was castrated. That's what most people think of because we've always been taught that they were the ones who was used around the king's harem, which is women, and by them being castrated, that worrying about them being involved with the women would not happen. That's not always true in every case. In this case, Philip was not uh, castrated. If he had been, he would not have been permitted in the fellowship of God's work because if you read in Deut Deuteronomy, uh, one who had their privates removed was not allowed to be in the uh, fellowship and the service of the temple. So Philip was a deacon of the, the, the church fellowship. Uh, this was a high and very important position he was in. So let's keep reading. Who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Recap, a man of Ethiopia, a, 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 a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the uh, Ethiopians. Now, he is a black man. We know that we understand that he was well-trained. He was dedicated and disciplined. We know all of this does not always mean castrated. Acts 8.28 was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah 
the prophet. Why was the word Isaiah used here? Does anybody know? The meaning of the word is Isaiah. Isaiah in the form of a Greek word. Remember that the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The word Isaiah is the word translated for uh, uh uh, it was translated Isaiah. as Isaiah. Now, we still know pretty well what it kind of meant, but let's look at this. This man was sitting there reading. Let's go back over that. The Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. He had already gotten to where Jesus, uh, the Lord, had told him to go. Now that he's where he was told to go, he sees uh, this man sitting in his chariot and reading. And then what was interesting here is said that he would he heard him read the prophet Isaiah. When I looked that up, it was said to be known that the people were known to read out loud, not citing like we do. That's why Philip heard him reading and knew what he was reading. Now, if Philip had not been a studier, a learned man of God's word, he would not have known what uh, he was reading. That's why he asked him, do I understand what thou readest? Now, what was he reading? Isaiah 53, 6 is really what he was quoting there, where he said, all we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one of his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before shears, it, uh, Shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. <clears throat> now, when he read this, he didn't understand this. Isaiah was written around 700 years before the time of Philip and the eunuch. 700 years. So when we speak of the power of God and we talk of prophecy, this man is reading out of one of the major prophets, Isaiah, who, as far as I'm concerned, and I've heard others say the same, Isaiah as being the one that, uh, that was able to uh, address many more of the issues dealing with future events than the other prophets during his time and before his time. Okay, when we study, we must always be prepared to answer not only the questions that we see when we read, but we must be prepared to go beyond what it is that we see on the script. That's why you look up all the nouns that you find in the area and get an understanding. So when we read this, the one of the reasons I stopped there was that the shock of so many people who are reading things that they really do not know. You have not studied. You did not understand. And neither did this man understand what he was reading. Now, if you look at verse 33 in Acts 8, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? And the, uh, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? It's a question. He didn't know, but he's asking a question. How many of us just read without understanding and, and fearful to ask somebody a question because they don't want to appear to be or sound as if they didn't know what they're talking about? It's not a, a matter of whether you understood what was being said or not. If you got a question, what should you do with your question? Ask it. 
ask it. And she is 100% correct. There was a lot of stuff going on in this chapter. And Philip was one of the ones. Uh, and if I did make it sound like Philip was uh, 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 the, the uh, a eunuch. Eunuch, it was not. It is the one who was sitting in the uh, chariot. Okay? I hope I didn't get you confused on that. The one that was sitting in the chariot was the one who was appointed over the chariot, Candace's chariot. He was the one that I was saying also was the black man. Now, Philip was commissioned by God to be down there to meet with him because this eunuch was not able to understand why he was continuing the study he was reading. Now, it is not exactly clear, but it some of the illustrations, and some of the things I studied on this, that the chance is that the eunuch was in the back in the chariot. He was not the one who was operating the chariot. And it's so, and let me see if I can find uh, okay, verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. If he was driving the, the chariot, he would not have had to command the chariot to be still. So it, it seems as though he told the driver, hold up right here. And he said there, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the uh, eunuch, and he baptized, and he baptized him there. Now, I'm only bringing out the part because there is hours of study in this whole chapter of, uh, of Acts to understand what was going on. My primary effort today was to focus upon the fact that this man was reading and he had no idea about what he was reading. And because the Lord knew that he was sincere in heart, he sent Philip down there to meet with him. Philip had been down in that area and doing a great work with a lot of the people at that time. Uh, so it wasn't strange. But if you read carefully, you'll also find out that Philip saved, caused a lot of the people to turn to Christ. Even Simon, who was a uh, sorcerer, one who had most of the people in the area bamboozled, that's how they say it. Uh, thinking that he was a greatest man around there until Philip, until Peter and John showed up. Now, yeah. Philip called, uh, had brought a lot of the people into salvation, but Peter and John was the one that brought the, the spirit of the, Ho the Holy Ghost upon the people. Yes. So, and then when they saw the works, this uh, 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 Simon who saw these works of what, what Peter and John done, Simon himself wanted to purchase this power that Peter and John had for himself because he wanted to make money by laying hands on the people. Amen. Simon's in today's life. but So when you read this, this scripture, Read it prayerfully. Take your time. Many people are like the eunuch. They're reading and have no idea of what they have read. Many of us are scared to go out and search. Now, these words I use, Isaiah, the eunuch, Philip, all of these things, people who study already knew the answer. And when and they understood when they already get to Isaiah 53, because they have read it so many times, they know the testimony testimony of it. But to add on top of that is the beauty that Isaiah saw this down through the years and time, 700 years before it happened. I want to do a study with this on the uh, the prophets to under, to build an enlightened a value of prophecy in our hearts because we run over it so much. We don't really get an in-depth understanding of how powerful the prophets were in their vision, seeing things thousands of years before the event even happened. We don't yeah. think about that. When we think about how God is able to do 
If you really accepted and knew the power of God, why do you fret so much and complain so much? And especially those who say that they know God. If you know God, then you understand that all through history, God is so powerful and he's so unique in what he does. He loves us so much. Then what you're going through is not much of anything to complain about because God's already there. Most of the times our troubles is God using our troubles to get us closer to him. Hmm. Why do he use trouble? Because he allows situations that works on us getting rid of our ways so that we can get closer to him. The more of you that exist, the, the, it, it, it builds a barrier between you and God. The only barrier that you have between you and God is you, your life. You haven't been able to weed it out. So let me get back to this. So when you study, don't just read. You have to study the who, what, when, where, how, why. Those things need to be answered. It allows you to get the whole picture. The eunuch was in great need. His soul was earning to be uh, a learned person of Christ. That's why he was reading. He wanted to know. They didn't have the Bible at that time. They only had the, the scrolls, the old scriptures that they were reading, that they had been taught from, from those who were listening at that time. And to go back and read the he, the who, and the why, and what they're doing, it was confusing. That's why the uh, eunuch asked the question. Let's go back to that. Verse 31, 30. And Philip ran hither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand this, thou what thou readest. We need to be challenging to those today. Maybe we need to ask those today. Do you really know what you're reading? How do you know? What are you seeing? What do you understand? We need to take the time. If you honestly and earnestly want to know, God will send somebody to you to help you understand. That's what the, the purpose of Philip running down there for to find this man and help him to understand. And in the midst of him teaching him, this man received Christ as his savior. Now, how many people today that you know need to be saved? How many of you right here in the sound of my voice will hear the command of God to say, go to somebody, call up somebody, help them. And you sit up there and say, well, I ain't the pastor. They can call on deacon so-and-so, reverend so-and-so. I ain't. The God will call who he wants because remember, the temple is, you are the temple of God. You, you are the one who carries the word of God, the testimony of God. And God is depending upon us as ambassadors of Christ to spread the word to help those that are lost. This is what happened with Philip and the eunuch. We must get ourselves prepared to get ourselves out of the way so that when Christ calls us to be used, we're ready to go. How many people Amen. are not saved because you won't do what God calls you to do? Uh -oh. How many people may die and go to hell because Christ said, run down there and save this man? Now, God wants a person. They, they're not going to they ain't going to hell if he wants them saved because he already knows how lazy people are. If he knows that you're not going to go, he will ask you if you fail not to go, you will lose your blessing. But he'll send someone else in your place. He will come to him. Just like you call out for help, you expect God to show up. When God calls upon you to go save somebody's life, he doesn't look for excuses. It says that he called upon Philip and then Philip got up. So he must have been laying down whatever he was doing. He stopped what he was doing to go fulfill the course of what God had called him to do. When you read, do you understand? Have you read the whole Bible and still not understand who God is? People talk about I've read the Bible over three times. But when I look at your life, I can't tell you ever read anything out of the Bible. 
You don't have no power. You don't have the strength. It's like you don't have the possession of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost cannot live. And let me back that up. The, the Holy Ghost will not reside in a place and it not change or improve. Where God is, there has to be a change. You can't stay to owe you and possess the power of God. So when you study, open up your Bible, invite the Lord into your study. Ask God to show you. Allow the Holy Spirit to uh, come into your life. Last Sunday, I heard several people give their uh, testimony and how they a study and how they approach God. You have to have a preparation to meet and talk with God. You must prepare your mind. And then when you prepare your mind and your heart to hear God speak and you proceed to study, you need to be prepared to hear when he wants to talk with you. If it's confusing, ask the question. Depend on somebody. The 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 uh the, the eunuch asked said Christ when when Philip said, Do you understand what you read is? Verse 31, and he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he asked it in a question. What do you expect? I don't understand this. And it goes on and says, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Ain't that something? Are you imagining how this took place? Philip in his own place, the, the eunuch in his own place, but God brings the two together and not only brings them together, saves this man's life. Do you understand what you read? If I remember the scripture says, in all thy getting, get an understanding. Do you really understand what you read? Just because you've been in church for 30 years don't mean that you understood what you read. Uh, I've heard people who are old and teaching. And actually, they should not be teaching. They still Amen. need to be in training. Sister Wright Amen. has said on a few occasions, I've heard Sister Sinea, Sister Valora, say on a few occasions, uh, they're not ready. They don't, they, they, they feel like they're not prepared. And that's a fair assessment of who you are because nobody knows you better than you. But don't always stay in the, in the spot for year after year after year of being where you were in the beginning. You have to dedicate Amen. yourself to becoming greater than you were before. What good is it to you to be a member of a Pacific church? For 30 years and you don't know one more Bible by verse than you did 30 years ago when you went into that church. Do you understand what you read? 30 years, I'm just using the number, in the church. And yet you don't know how to pray to receive power to get answers to your prayer. 30 years. You The same problem you had 30 years ago. You got today, but you tell me that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what you read? Let's break it down. If you understood what you read, then you would understand that God is constantly growing you through the spirit of God. You can't have the same spirit today and the same spirit in 20 years later that has not moved in your life in any way at all? You, you can't. 
Do you understand what you read? It said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why did you have to go any further? Do you understand what you read? For somebody mm -hmm. to give up their child for you to live. Do you not understand what you read? Are you able to sacrifice one of your children so that somebody else could be saved? Anybody. That it could you do that? But yet Christ sacrificed his child, who was perfect. God sacrificed his son. He was perfect without sin. He gave him up for you so that you could believe on him and receive everlasting life. But do you understand what you read? Isaiah 53, when he read that, he said, I don't understand what I read. And what he was reading was about a man coming in the future that would die for you. And at this moment, when Philip and the eunuch actually came together, Christ had already died. It's a different, different transition right here because many of the Jews did not believe in Jesus Christ when he came. It's a Amen. mass confusion at this time. But yet what he was reading and he's looking at how the church that believed in Christ because of Saul was being dispersed all over the world. He saw how it was so chaos is so dangerous to, to, to serve this man Christ. It's confusing. Who was he talking about? That's what the eunuch asked. I really want to go into this part of the parts of the scripture that's before this, but I just want to choose this. So my challenge to you today, how many years have you been in the church and what value have you received in that time? It's not that the Holy Ghost can't teach you the issue is whether or not you have been open to the teaching. Do you not understand what you read? After you have read and learned, there's a point of time God will call you out for ministry. Are you prepared? Or are you just going to sit in your home between the four walls, sit in your church between the four walls, and not move anything. The Lord told me, showed me, he showed me several times. It's not the pastor that grows the church, the, the, the building, uh, the organization structure that's in the building. It's not the pastor. It's the members. The, the pastor Amen. is only a storehouse for the people to come to get and be enriched with what they need on a daily basis. When they go outside the building, they become ambassadors of Christ to reach the masses, to bring other people through conversation and witnessing and your show of who God is in your life that brings those people into the organized church building. It's you. But if you're not witnessing, if you're not going out with anything of value, you can't say anything to the people and the people will not come because they don't see nothing in you. Amen. So we invite, we ask, we share, we have ministries. It is my desire that everyone here that is capable physically, able to do anything, has a ministry that draws the people to themselves. And that by them being drawn to you, and you come to be with us at redemption, what do you think will happen? The people will come to see what it is that you have. We must go out and, and preach to the world and let them know that God is ambitious to, to find more of us. But we cannot grow if we do not understand what we read. When we read, from the heart of God and what he puts in us. It changes your thought about the world. 
Instead of you always trying to find ways to make you happy, you find yourself always at the church trying to do something. When I was a young man, I was at the church quite often, but that was because I was the musician down there and I enjoyed doing those things. I had a ministry, but the ministry was not about Christ. It was about my talent and enjoying it until I realized that my talent that God was using was a drawing mechanism that he had over me to keep me at the church house, to be before his feet, to, to always make myself accessible unto him. I drew closer to the Lord. And the closer I got to the Lord, the less I found the need for sleep, the less I found the need for medication. Although Satan's still trying to work on that part to keep me dis disembobulated. The less I needed friends. You ever see people who are always looking for friends? They are so unsatisfied oh, yeah. with themselves. They cannot function. Amen. When you find that the only friend that you need is Jesus, you're on the right track. When you find that in your home all by yourself, you're not by yourself as long as Jesus is with you. You're not alone Amen. because Jesus walks by me. I, I don't feel like I'm without strength because the Lord is my strength. So when you read your Bible, do you understand what you read? God is a great God. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm always Amen. happy and pleased to have God by me, for me, doing great things Amen. with me. Because of him, yes. I've been able to stand when I, I was just too tired to stand. I believe because of him, I haven't suffered sicknesses that many people have gone through. Because of, of him, Christ Jesus. He bought me a wife that puts up with me that nobody else could ever put up with. That's a joy. Because of him, he's given me the spirit of love, whereas I have a side that I could show that, I, that, I, I, that most people would call me selfish, arrogant, uh, any number of things. But because of Christ, because of what I've read, he has given me a humble spirit. To learn to shut up, even though I'm right, but just be careful while the Lord works on them. Because of the Lord, when I see the sun come up, it brings me great, great joy. I enjoy the, the sunrise more than I do watching the television come on. Because of the Lord, when I look up at night and I see the stars shining, I have a greater appreciation for the stars that he gave me for the beauty that they bring. Not to mention the other great things that's beyond the sky because I know that God is the author and the creator of what I see. So when I read God's word, I become excited and it builds even a greater excitement because it just makes me want to be uh, uh, that more energetic to run to Christ. I want to be like a, a child that's in a midst of a crowd looking for their parents. They don't want to see nobody, hear anybody, but they want to see their mama. They want to see their daddy, and they run up to them. I want to be able to see Christ in the midst of the crowd. I don't care about nobody else. So when you do understand what you read, you can never be the same as you was yesterday. Because God will build you closer to himself. When you read, take the time. Don't rush it. Take your time. Open up your mics. Let me hear from you. Since I met Jesus.